For USCfootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Shotgun Spradling for instant analysis of USC's 24-14 loss to Cal in Berkeley. USC now finishes the 2021 season 4-8. and eight. I'm going to start there, Shotgun. This season is finally coming to an end. Yeah, it's over. I, I think USC fans are happy that that is the case. Um, Lincoln Riley was announced on Monday. I think that's really big going forward for USC. It gives them a little bit of hope because this was one of the worst seasons in USC history, the worst in the last 30 years for USC since they went 3-8 and eight in 1991. Um, and we saw at the end some guys were definitely fighting. But they didn't even bring a whole travel roster. You know, they had 47 scholarship players dressed and ready to go tonight. Uh, the travel roster is up to near 70. USC did not be able to, was not able to bring that many players. Some guys were hurt, some guys were injured, some guys just decided to call it quits and get prepared for the next step for them. Um, and, and I think that that's you know where we need to start because we wondered when we got here. How many players are going to have? Yeah. Who is going to be here? And what is this team going to look like when they take the field? And I thought they fought, but I thought it was just a microcosm of this season. The offense moved the ball well and then fell apart in scoring opportunities. They missed two field goals. They had a, uh, a chance down in the red zone, and quarterback gets hit. Miller Moss had to come in for Jackson Dart. He gets hit from the blind side, fumble, goes back almost 20 yards, and, and Cal recovers it. That's the type of night it was for USC where they had chances but they couldn't finish off drives, and that's just kind of how it was all season. Defense played pretty well, holding Cal to 24 points, but it's not a really a, a high-powered offense to begin with. So they did their part enough to, to keep them in the game, but USC's offense couldn't make enough moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, starting with the atmosphere, it's championship weekend, but yet USC is making up this game uh, with Cal, both 4-7 and seven teams coming into this game. It kind of had a scrimmage-like atmosphere at first. Uh, like you said, a small roster, not a lot of fans in the stadium at first. It meant a lot of young guys got more opportunities tonight. Yeah, and there were some bright spots. I thought Brandon Campbell ran the ball really well. I talked to Keonta Ingram after the game, who did not play, unfortunately, for USC. Uh, falls just shy of a 1,000 yards. I know that was a goal he had to, to try to finish off. And I talked to him about the potential of the future. He said, we'll see. He's going to you know, take a week and, and discuss with his family before uh, he makes any decision. But he was super excited for the young buck, uh, Brandon Campbell, a guy that he's been coaching up a lot. And during the game, I watched and Keonta Ingram is, is pointing out different things to him. And you saw Brandon Campbell's confidence growing as the season, or as the game progressed. Uh, uh, and I thought that was something we saw from some of the freshmen who got opportunities early in the season. Their their uh, confidence just grew as the season went along. And that gives you a little bit uh, of uh, hope for the next season that these guys will take what they learned this year and, and be able to push forward. Prophet Brown gets his first start. He had 12, 15 family members here. When he came out of the locker room, they were all there to greet him, which was a cool little moment there. He's a NorCal kid. Um, but I thought he played pretty well filling in because Chris Steele was not here. Uh, Isaac Taylor Stewart came off the bench because he missed a couple of practices this week. So Kalen Bullock actually moved to a cornerback position. We've seen that kid make plays all over the field. Today he was at cornerback, and sometimes he would shift back to safety. So, you know, I think he's a very bright spot going forward for USC. Uh, and then some of the older guys, that, or guys that have been around a little bit, but finally getting their opportunity, Kyle Ford made a couple catches, and then a couple of the freshmen, Michael Jackson and Kyron Ware Hudson, got his first opportunity and had a couple catches as well. So there were a couple bright spots, but overall it was just the same thing over for USC, and, and that's the unfortunate thing for, for fans is you, you see the same uh, storyline over and over for this team. And, you know, they got to hope now that the new coaching staff comes in and can change those storylines because there is potential. There is opportunities. USC, again, move the ball well. But they, they outgain Cal in the game and still fall 10, 10 uh, points short. So that was kind of the, the way the season went for USC, and I think the fans are ready to, ready to move forward, see what this recruiting class can get, see what coaches fill out the, the coaching staff, and see who stays, who goes. Yep. We talked to a lot of guys today. Talked to a lot of seniors, a lot of guys who have an extra year of eligibility, a lot of decisions to be made in this next week or so. And I think the offensive line is going to be the one that is going to be most interesting to me. Keontae Ingram, a couple of those guys, we want to see what the playmakers can do. But USC does not have a ton of quality depth or experience depth on the offensive line. So we'll see what Andrew Voorhees does. We'll see uh, Liam Jimmins is gone. We'll see what some of those other guys, Brett and Elon, do. Um, and, and we'll see what USC can, can put together going forward to give this new coaching staff you know, a talented roster. Mm -hmm. Circle back to what you said earlier, Jackson Dart did come out of the game injured. Uh, he was helped off the field. He was trying to lobby trainers and Dante Williams. He said, I'm fine, I'm fine. But then looked a little banged up heading out of the locker room after the game. Miller Moss gets his first real uh, time as a Trojan. I asked him after the game, you know, with Lincoln Riley coming in and in competition, does he expect to be uh, to play for USC next season? He said, absolutely. So from that, what do you take from his first real uh, time as a Trojan out there? I thought he looked fine. He did not nothing special, nothing terrible. Uh, he had one 
one bad throw that was nearly intercepted. Um, but besides that, he had a couple throws that were a little bit low. But he read the field, did what he needed to do. He drove the ball for USC, and then the same things happened to him that happened to Jackson Dart prior to that. Um, you know, just a, a protection where he didn't read it well. Um, the offensive line didn't do a good job of shifting the protection. He gets drilled when USC's down and 10, 15 yard line, fumble, and Cal recovers it. And that kind of sealed the deal because that was, you know, later in the fourth quarter or midway through the fourth quarter, and USC had a chance to, to really get back in the game. And instead, you know, turnovers end up killing them, and they weren't creating enough turnovers on the defensive side. Mm-hmm. We, ta- we talked about the atmosphere at the start of the game. At the end of the game, uh, as the game started winding down, the clock started winding down, lots of hugs on the sideline for guys like Vi Malapai. I know Eric Cromanhook took it especially hard. Uh, Liam Jimmins, those guys come to mind. They're, they're leaving, and they seem like the guys have worked hard as Trojans. You know, it hasn't been the best seasons that they've been a part of USC, but they put their head down and worked. What have you seen from them? I mean, you see the senior class that, you know, this six-year senior class that has gone through so much um, and some ups early in their career when they weren't really contributing and then some downs throughout the the end of it. So it's tough to finish it off this way. And there's a lot of emotions for guys, a lot of emotions for younger guys that really look up to those guys. So, um, you know, some of them were taking it in at the end of the game. Vi was taking it in, a lot of smiles. Everyone wanted to say hello to him. Whereas Chrome and Hook was taking it pretty hard, some other guys. So, uh, you know, we saw some tears on the way out. Brett Nealon got choked up at the end of his interview a little bit. So we'll see where this team is. I mean, emotionally, they were fighting for each other. And I think that's something I, I talked to a couple guys about. What's it like when you get on that plane? And there's less than 50 scholarship guys out there. Yeah. I kind of, before the game, I kind of 47 scholarship players. They lost four during the game to injuries. So down to 43 players by the end of the, of the game. Um, and they said, we were really excited about the guys who you know, got on that plane and were ready to fight for each other and were ready to finish this season off. Didn't quit, finished off everything, um, and, and I, I think that you give them credit for that. Obviously, this is not a good season. Obviously, this is not what USC fans want to see, but you do give credit to the individual players for fighting through everything they've gone through and all the turmoil throughout these last few years uh, with the constant overhang of, is Clay Helton going to be fired? And then finally, when he does get fired and how the rest of the season played out. So you, you feel for those guys that they couldn't have the, the ideal college football experience. But they're going to learn from it. These are the life lessons you take away from playing a sport when the bad things, those are usually when you learn the most lessons. So uh, I think those guys are going to go, uh, the ones that don't have an uh, opportunity to go forward in football are going to you know, be able to take this into the real world and, and use these lessons they've learned to, to become you know, successful and productive citizens uh, you know, around Los Angeles area, uh, of course. And we'll see some of those guys around, which is always fun to see yeah. the former guys. Kevin Green, a former USC player from about eight, nine, ten years ago, was on the sideline. Everybody's like, oh, that guy's, that's one of the best guys ever, talking to him on the sideline. So that's that's what we love to see. Yeah. That's what we hope to see from these guys that are departing now. But again, this season's not good enough for USC football. Yeah. This, you know, where they're at right now is not good enough. So now it's time to get back to work. I talked with a couple of young guys. I asked them, what are you going to work on in the offseason? What are you going to do this next week? And they said, it's time to get back to work immediately. You know, we've got to start adding more weight, you know, getting in the weight room, all those different things. So we'll see, uh, you know, where it goes from here and, you know, how different the roster looks yeah. in two weeks. And in two months, yeah. and then you know next year when the season starts, there could be three different rosters when we look at it in, in those two set in those segments there. Um, and you know we'll see what USC's roster looks like next year. They've got to get more talent on the roster. They've got to replace some offensive linemen with some of the guys who are leaving. So a lot of things to work on this off season. Now it starts. It's time to get started right now. Take this one. They take this loss. Uh, the emotions of it. Cry themselves to sleep or whatever they have to do. Wake up tomorrow. Get ready to work. Look at you with your own like post-game speech over here. It's, it's an analysis shotgun. No, I'm just kidding. I uh, know you mentioned uh, how this is a, a horrible season for USC fans, but it's a little bit tolerable now that they know who's at head coach Lincoln Riley. This was actually the first time we got to talk to players outside of the, the four we got on Tuesday about the reaction to the hire. What did they have to say? What were some of the highlights? You know, from the guys that, that I heard from, it was that they were excited. Everyone's excited about the opportunity, the potential there, especially the offensive guys. They're looking, looking at uh, and licking their chops at what they've seen Oklahoma Oklahoma do in the five years that Lincoln Riley has been there. So I think they're looking forward to it. And we'll see. Okay. It sounds like it's time to go. <laughs> we'll see what that, that offense can do next year for USC and what the, what the Trojans look like. But the biggest thing is excitement. And I think that's the thing with the entire fan base. Everyone is excited and moving towards the same direction for the first time. Everyone's on the same page for the first time since I've been uh, in L.A. and, yeah. you know, the 12 years yeah. I've been here. So, yeah. <laughs> I guess this is our signal to wrap up instant analysis, wrap up the 2021 <laughs> season. It was long enough, so Kyle's just like, it's over it's now. to turn the lights out, guys. <laughs> it's, it's over now. All righty. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up for instant analysis. Thanks so much for everyone who stayed tuned and, and started watching this season or kept watching, even though it was a bad season. We appreciate it. We love uh, giving you guys practice reports and post-game reports, so we appreciate it. Uh, for Shotgun Spraddling, I'm Keely Orr. For more, check out uscfootball.com.